Welcome back to the News at 10. The existence of a small number of sustainable institutions is one of the reasons for brain drain in the country. With this in mind, accomplished entrepreneur and founder of Computer Warehouse Group, Mr. Austin Okiri, launched the Osso Leadership Academy, a place to mentor entrepreneurs and maintain thriving businesses. Our correspondent, Mary Alale Yusuf, reports. <laughs> The host of the event exchanges pleasantries with guests. He starts the meeting by sharing exactly why he's on this venture. I wanted to impart the advice that I would have given my younger self in my entrepreneurial adventure. Secondly, I wanted to be to others, be to others the mentor that I wish I had. The keynote speaker appreciates the founder's effort and touches on how he can help Nigeria's political landscape. Those who thumb their noses at politics get ruled by their inferiors. And I think this is very true in the modern world. Perhaps there could be opportunities for collaboration with ALA in not just mentoring entrepreneurs, but also I might add, mentoring future political leaders. To the glory of God and for the betterment of all those that will use this facility. A look around the facility shows offices and classrooms ready for use. And indeed, resource persons say this is a timely intervention. Mr. Okere stresses that ALA is not a substitute for business schools. Rather, it is a place for more knowledgeable people to mentor entrepreneurs with hands-on experience. The people that are going to come here are people that are running businesses that are in scale mode, but they need that pushover to scale to the next level. And people will ask, why not startups? And our answer is simple. We want to make an impact and create a value chain. If the businesses that are scaling, scale to the next level are successful, they will also give businesses to the younger ones so everybody is pulled up. A business school will teach theories and sometimes do case studies on certain things that happen in real life. But an academy of this nature uh, is more inclined to experiential training where people actually learn for the, from those who have done certain things in the past. The academy is already enrolling its first batch of 40 students for a course of three weeks and classes start on April 17th, 2018. Mary Alale Yusuf, Channel Television News. The River State Governor Nyeson Wike has been explaining why the state government demolished shanties and other makeshift buildings in the state capital. He cited the high level of criminal activities in the area, the defacing of the city and poor hygiene as some of the factors. The governor also explained that some of the genuine owners of properties that were destroyed are being compensated, but he insisted that his administration's urban renewal move will remain on course. Our strategy for urban renewal um, is to make sure that uh, some of these shanties that uh, most of the criminals uh, think as a hiding place, we try to bring them back and try to build uh, defeating edifice for people in town, whether commercial or housing. We have not actually decided, but the point is that we, we did compensate uh, some of those who own some what we call some properties. But uh, you can see that the, the whole place was being defaced and uh, criminals uh, using it as a hiding place to commit one atrocity or the other. So uh, we have decided that we, there will be no hiding place for criminals and uh, we we'll thank God for the support from the communities that they are aware of the kind of crime that has been perpetrated around this uh, area. Uh, we have seen it yourself, so I've directed that um, the entire place or the debris to be uh, removed immediately and then let the water will be cleared so that at the end of the day we can uh, clearly say what we'll turn it into. 
River State Governor Yes from Wiki. Let's take a look at some business news now. Here's Anne Wild. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Ijoma. Welcome to Business News. The Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemia Adioshin, reshuffling five portfolios at the Securities and Exchange Commission. The Minister announced Ms. Mary Uduk as the Acting Director General of the Commission, replacing Dr. Abdul Zubair, who's been there for five months. Ms. Uduk is to regulate the capital market, while Dr. Zubair is to move to the External Relations Department. The minister also redeployed Mr. Reginald Karasuusa as the Acting Executive Commissioner Legal and Enforcement. Mr. Isiako Tilde as the Acting Executive Commissioner Operations. And Mr. Henry Rowland as the Acting Executive Commissioner Corporate Services. These appointments are coming less than one week to the scheduled first capital meeting for the year 2018. The Delta State Government has announced the possibility of a supplementary budget for the year 2018, and that's in addition to the 2018 appropriation bill of 308 billion Nara signed into law in December 2017. The Commissioner for Budget and Economic Planning, Mr. Kingsley Emu, made this development known at a press briefing in Asaba, the state capital. Significantly, and the way the pace at which we are running, we are most likely going to have a supplementary budget. Because the, the revenue streams are looking up, and a lot of important things are coming up. Even the job creation thing, we are holding a fresh meeting to see how we can domesticate them within communities under the community initiative. You take uh, your own community, I don't know where you come from, and then look at that, look at the peculiarity of that area and don't do generic training, train them on things that they can that can be useful to them within the environment and that can get get the maximum impact. When you look at the fact that uh, the, the there was a recession in 2016, starting from the first quarter of 2016 that ended in the second quarter 2017. That's basically half of 2017. Uh, despite that, we were still able to raise the IGR. I think that it, it was a credible performance. But having said that, I think we can do better. And we're working on this year to try and do better uh, compared to budget. Now let's check out the equities market and how it closed today. It's on a positive note, bringing the market indicator to its high weekly gain in one month. Vici Adebayo has a summary of today's transactions. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Reports. The Nigerian equity market still appears to be reacting to the lifting of the technical suspension on the share price of Wando as the All Share Index turns 0.29% positive, ending the week at 40,928.7. Traders say news that Saplat Petroleum Development Company is set to pay interim dividends to its shareholders also lifted the spirit of investors at the market. The banking sector was up 0.44% boosted by gains recorded in major banking stocks, including GT Bank. And talking about the gains now, Weber Bank led 31 others in that group with close to 10%. On the other hand, international breweries led 22 other decliners for the day. Sovereign Trust Insurance was atop the top trade chat on Friday. Traders anticipate a better performance next week as first quarter earnings are expected to start hitting the market. And that's it on the Stock Market Reports. I am BC Adibayo. Thanks a lot, BC. Well, it's mixed trading across some major markets around the world, including Africa. Only the European market made headway to the green. Let's see the figures.
For those numbers, we end business news on the last trading day of the week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Mwawadu. It's back to you, IJ. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Anne. Team Nigeria is three gold medals away from equaling its medals haul from the Glasgow 2014 Commonwealth Games after a gold rush in Gold Coast, Australia. Nigeria now has eight gold, five silver and five bronze medals, totaling 18 medals. Toby Amosma ran a time of 12.68 seconds to win gold in the women's 100-meter hurdles. Para-athlete Suwabidu Galadima led from the start to win gold in the men's T47 100 meters with a time of 11.04 seconds. Oduayo Adukuroye successfully defended her 2014 gold medal in the women's wrestling freestyle 57 kilograms. And Blessing Oborodudu claimed wrestling's second gold medal in the women's freestyle 68 kilograms. Now let's get some perspective on the games and Nigeria's performance. I'm being joined from Abuja by a sports analyst, Ikedi Isiguzo. Thanks a lot for joining us on the News at 10. Good evening. Good evening. So we have three medals, or so gold medals that is, to surpass our performance in Glasgow. Can we do it and will this be our best if we do? Well, uh, the, the results from these games would... Uh, put us generally in a dilemma. Uh, before we got to Gold Coast, there were the uh, complaints and comments about the level of preparations. So if we get there, as is the case now, and we win the number of medals we're winning, we'll come back home uh, comfortable with the fact that we do not need the preparations. I cannot predict how many medals we will return with, but the results are, in quote, impressive enough and that people will not care about the processes that led to them. And for me, that's where the challenge really is. What do you do differently about this preparation issue? It seems to be a perennial issue. Whenever we're going for continental or international competitions, preparation is there. For this particular one, we had about two months, um, I understand. Why do we always have this issue in this country? It, uh, the, the, the issues center on a couple of things, one of which is Increasingly, we do not read as a country. So when we, we have reports piled off and we get piled up and we get into offices, we don't read those reports. I know for one that um, the Vision 2020 reports, particularly on sports, I can speak emphatically on that, had recommended that we have um, a way of preparing for competitions as a form of cycles. You know, cycles we come from the Olympics. The Olympics are just two years away from now. So. Preparations for the Commonwealth Games will also include that. Preparations for the All-Africa Games two years before this will also include that. So if we go on that way, we will consistently have preparations, have younger athletes coming up. And then there will be also the pool effect of having to look for replacements for those athletes, and we go on that way. But most of the sports events we have are becoming uh, ceremonies. Uh, the National Sports Festival is becoming ceremonies, school sports ceremonies inter-house sports. So it goes all through that process. But mm. if we read and look at the recommendations that are in those documents, we'll find solutions to the things going on. But everyone seems to be comfortable with the number of uh, medals that are won. And then once the purpose of sports becomes winning, other than the things that could be attached to it, the general well-being of that place, their welfare. For instance, it's, um, now we are finding out that those who win we get certain amounts. And if that was meant for motivation, it wouldn't have worked. It was just finding out half time winning. If it was also meant for motivation, some of the people who would have made this team did also not make the team. So preparation is important. We do not know how long we have to be talking about that, but yeah. nobody yeah. seems to be listening. And the point will be made now that if you prepared for two months and won this number of medals, why do you even want, need to prepare? Okay, but let me just ask you, um, finally now, looking at the countries on the leaderboard, you see some of them with over 60 medals, and here we are trying to struggle, you know, to, to make about 11 or thereabout. How does that make you feel when you look at the overall performance against the rest of the world, not just um, looking at ourselves alone, finally? No, there are too many ways of looking at that. One would be the number of sports you entered for, a second way would be the number of medals in the sports you entered for. If we are looking at swimming, for example, you'll be talking of not less than uh, 48 medals. So 
Even if a country is very strong in swimming and dominated swimming, no matter the number of people you enter for the other sports, they will dominate them. Secondly, we do not pay attention. Part of what we call preparations will be paying attention to qualifying for these competitions. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, performances in the Commonwealth Games could also help you qualify for the Olympics. But we are just looking at how many medals you can win from an event. And then there are so many events we don't compete in. So that's how we end up with the number of medals that we do. But I'm more concerned in us having consistent uh, programs of preparation. So when we make analysis of our performances, we could say we won this number of medals because we did this. If we don't win, we we'll say we didn't win because yeah. we didn't do this. What is driving sports currently in Nigeria, uh, ironically, is poverty. People are so mm. poor that they see sports as some channel for survival. So when they get in there, nobody needs to motivate them. If things improve and we don't have as much poverty as we do, we will decline in our sports performance. That's one. Right. Secondly, the special athletes also, uh, someone had said years ago, Professor Ken and Ijeku, that if polio is cured, we won't have athletes in special sports because essentially the, number, the people we have are those who are suffering from uh, polio. All right. Thank you so very much, sports analyst KD Istiguzo, for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. Thank you. Still ahead on the news at 10, we have some more sports as reigning champions Real Madrid face former champions Bayern Munich in the semi-final of the UEFA Champions League. Please stay with us.